Hey guys and welcome to the podcast review. If you'd like to see the unofficial patch notes in the top link of the description is our discord and there is a channel called patch notes in our discord where the podcast notes will be posted. Just to remind you guys if I do talk too slow for you down the bottom right of the YouTube video there is a cogwheel and you can change the speed to 1.5 times to speed me up. So the first thing Nikita spoke about was actually about the servers. He did say that they've added a hundred more servers as well as backend servers to stabilize the overall servers. The game growth has had a 15% per week. So the servers are always being added and their highest priority. Even though a lot of people complain, they are definitely a lot more stable than they were before. And now onto the second heated topic, which is cheaters and hackers within Tarkov. He did say that the game is in the best condition it's ever been in, thanks to Battlelight. It is a huge, they, they have a huge amount that is banned throughout, thanks to Battlelight, compared to how they were before. There are a lot of hacking sites that are always under development, like, you know, where they're out of date, basically, where they're actually, how can I say, de uh, detectable. So they are actually staying on top of it. He did mention that they were doing some cheeky stuff with the sites. I'm assuming they're buying the hacks to see how they work and then, you know, working out how to stop it from working. As well as they have a team dedicated working alongside with Battleye themselves to make sure everything is staying on top of it. And the actual amount of cheaters, cheaters that you will be you know seeing inside of the game are far and in between and they do actually get banned within a few hours of having the hack but everyone knows how lab is at the moment in my opinion you know labs are just filled with it at the moment they've started to seep out onto other maps but you gotta go with what he says he's our lord and savior but in my opinion the hackers situation is a bit more rampant than it was before Nikita did say 12.4 is almost ready. He did also mention that there won't actually be any weapons or weapon mods actually in 12.4. But, a little teaser, the Colt 1911 and the Vector with a load of mods will be coming in the patch after 12.4. He did also mention as well that the patch after 12.4 will be a optimization patch. So I'm assuming that the weapons and mods will be coming after the optimization patch he did also mention on top of that that there will be monthly patches for tarkov which is a wonderful thing he also mentioned due to the interchange rework that we will be covering later on in the video customs will be expanded he did say before this actual podcast that it will be expanded from factory side which connects construction to our old gas station which is the actually expansion that most of us was thinking before he did the wood side streets of tarkov is in full development and can be shown in a few weeks slash months they did also say that is four times the size of the reserve base and will be insanely detailed like no other game that is something that i am hugely excited for he did mention that is the flagship map so wants to make it the best map in Tarkov. There is a huge skill rework coming soon. Skills are meant to be hard, yes, and to take a long time to get due to the end game. But they are looking on making it a bit more feasible. They don't want everyone to be running around with max skills, you know, straight off the back. It is meant to be something that you're working towards end game. But they are coming in with a huge rework in the skills, especially with the new overweight system that we'll be covering in a bit. Steam audio has been a bigger issue than expected. It is still being worked on. It was extremely CPU heavy. It has actually been put in on the back burner. It is being worked on, but it's not their highest priority at the moment, but it will be revisited extremely soon and going ham at some of the details. They did say that they're having issues with actually how the sound works they want to add reverb and all those kind of things to entering rooms but it has been put on the back burner and just been concentrating on getting content out for us something that i'm extremely excited for cultus will be added without any warning it will be a hundred percent a surprise they weren't going to give any leaks about the cultist or anything like that so one day we could be minding our own business in shoreline and then boom 
We got some nice little knife welding poison dagger motherfuckers coming out of nowhere to come kill us. This would be an interesting moment for when they actually add it. Due to the new overweight systems, they've actually made stims more powerful and the debuffs were reduced around about the 30% mark. So with the endurance, because endurance, not endurance, stamina is going to be going down an awful lot due to the new weight system. They want to make it more feasible for us basically to be using these little stims to help us. So now on to Interchange. Interchange will have three new extracts. They didn't actually show us the extracts in game, but there will be three new extracts. As well as a new lighting rework on Interchange itself, you can shoot out lights. Every single light on Interchange is now destructible. So whether it's the giant spotlights or the two little lights that are powered by like, you know, that you can just place up or just the giant long bar lights on the ceiling, all of them are destructible. You can actually turn the lights on at the power station. Yes, it will not make interchange like daytime when it's midnight, but it does add a little bit more light and color. There are also store alarms that go off. Currently, they did say that the radius of the alarm is actually quite quiet. They do actually want to expand the alarm. The ones that they showed off was the store when you come up the main entrance into interchange and you turn right. That store just there as well as avocado. So now on to the new weight mechanics in Tarkov. They did mention, well, the guy who's sitting next to Nikita is called Dimitri. He is the one who's been working on everything in the game, whether it's sound, visual, just interactive ability, all that kind of stuff. He does everything. He's apparently one of the most overworked people at Battle State. So props to him. He adds in all of our systems. But he did mention that the weight would actually start slowing down our sprint at 25 kilos, not when you're starting to become overweight. There is also a color indicator at the bottom when it's starting to get a bit more heavier and heavier and heavier. So, and then you'll finally get to a certain amount of weight. He did have, I think it was 60 kilos, and he was already at the slowest speed. The stamina bars have now been split in two. You've actually got a full body stamina, which is what we had before, as well as an arm stamina. So let's say you're swinging your melee, right? The top bar, which is the blue bar, will actually decrease. Same as when you're ADSing as well and holding your breath. It will make that arm stamina de deplete, but whilst keeping your legs and body stamina like maxed out. So you can ADS be fully out of breath whilst you're ADSing down sight, but then you can actually run off and you still have full stamina, which is actually a really great thing to have. Same as if you're doing like a melee battle with viewers or stuff, you know, they can be beating each other up and they can still run around freely and happily skippity and stuff. As well, whilst being fully overweight, going back into the weight system, the heavier you get, the slower your animations get. So if you're going to go from walking to running, the heavier, heavier you are, the slower the animation, the transition between walking and running is going to be. Same as lying down and getting up. The animation is going to take a lot longer, the same as crouching, or the animate is basically like you're being warped into a slower animation the heavier you get. When you are at your max weight, you do only have one bar. It's basically like you've lost your leg. The, the way that your character moves around and he, he acts is basically like when you've got both your legs blacked out and you've taken painkillers, or no, sorry, you haven't taken painkillers and you're doing that weird wobble, your, that, that, that little wobble thing that you're doing. That's basically how it is when you start to become overweight. Another thing as well is due to the new transitions between, you know, walking and running, bunny hopping is actually going to be gone. So there isn't going to be any more bunny hopping. There are also some debuffs as well as huge overweight debuffs and fatigue that I'm going to get into now. So with the overweight debuff, they are only at 40 weight out of 60. When you overweight the debuff, you will make more noise. You will reduce your jump height stamina drain will be increased full damage will be increased and movement speed will be decreased 
which is everything makes sense when you're big and heavy you make more noise you can't jump as high basically it's a pretty decent like debuff and it actually makes a lot of sense personally i'm going to quite like it because the thick boys can no longer be speedy thick boys they're going to be slow moving tanks so on to huge overweight sprint is impossible due to overweight your stance height is reduced so you can't actually go full standing height pro movement drains your stamina and stance blocks stamina regain so i'm assuming that you cannot go in any position to get your stamina regained you are absolutely fucked this also goes on with the other stuff beforehand with the overweight stuff and it does increase your weapon sway basically just how it is when you've got your legs blacked out it's just exactly like that and finally onto fatigue what it would do it would drain your energy for a certain amount of time in this case on the stream is 0.38 i'm gonna assume the higher your endurance is the lower it's gonna be draining your your energy by but the thing is what he said was if you keep running so when your stamina bar hasn't filled up enough and you literally the moment it goes from red to green you keep running on top of that over and over again you will gain fatigue which means that you're have less stamina so i think the new thing that you're going to be doing when the patch gets released is letting your stamina bar get the entire way full and then run wait till it gets full and then run and actually it's been proven in one of my older videos that you do actually cover ground quicker by doing it this way where you're letting your stamina bar get full and then running again compared to just constant running and that's the end of everything that I want to cover. There will be some leak leaks after this little message that I'm going to give you. Showing off some new items, gun modifications. Shroud new streamer item that I think that he ac they accidentally showed. As well as a few new barter trades slash items as well, which is cloth. But in my opinion, with all of these changes, it is absolutely amazing. The stamina thing with the debuff to the weight it makes total sense there's people out there who can carry you know 150 kilos worth of stuff and can be bunny hopping and jumping off rooftops and yeah that that stuff i'm extremely excited for it will limit the movability of the thick boys which means they are just going to be walking tanks which means that if they're going to be holding fort and killer they are literally just going to be like a scab boss you know you kill if they're going to be slow and overweight that means they got good shit right which is brilliant for us little stealthy boys then you know you can go kill them same with the interactive ability on maps as well they did say they want to keep adding more and more stuff in like reserve was just like a starting ability with the you know the the, the pull down lever they did say on interchange that you can only turn the lights on you can't actually turn them off after they've been turned on but they did say that it's going to be they're going to be changing stuff in the future and making it, you know, adding in more stuff as well. But it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for this patch. This is same with the meds one. A lot of people didn't want the meds to be have that med timer, but it's helped out so much more. Same with the mag packing where you can just flick a 60 rounder in, you know, or bullets into a 60 rounder instantly. It, it, it changes the whole dynamic of the game with these simple updates. And it's going to be absolutely amazing to see what happens. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do stream over on twitch.tv slash piranha underscore seven days a week starting at 8am GMT. I do also have a website. If you'd like to check that out, it will be in the top link of the description where you can see all of my videos in one place, which like all the key videos, every extract, every task, uh, every gun build, it's all in one location, which just means if you guys. And now I'm going to let the, leak, the leaks play out and just have a great day guys.